Yeah, hi, uh, this is Joe Hoffmaster, and I wanted to do a little bit of a walkthrough of a chaparral that we got into stock uh, in late summer. It's the 307 SSX. And the main reason that I want to do this video is because I want to point out some things that I think are important, even though I don't necessarily see them on the websites or in the literature. So um, this shot basically shows you how wide the boat is. The boat is nine feet wide, so it's an extra roomy cockpit. Yet these two helm seats are really large enough for two people to sit on as long as they're not too large. If you notice how this is all <laughs> rigged up, it's, it's a retractable hard top. So what happens is these boats get used around Lake Anna and uh, down around Nauffolk where there's uh, low bridges. So you can actually drop that hard top down to get under those bridges. You can see how we've incorporated a ski toe point here so you have a nice high toe point. Um, these uh, hard tops come with skylights so they let in a lot of light but they cover about two-thirds of the cockpit so even though it doesn't seem like it here the hard tops actually covering from the windshield tip to the forward part of this aft seat so the, this side seat and this side seat, as well as the helm seats, are in the shade. This is a quality touch that not everybody uses. Um, actually, there's three of them displayed here. Number one, the bow scuff plate. So if you're trailering the boat, you don't dig into the fiberglass when you're trying to trailer the boat. This is a hoss pipe. A lot of builders will just mount an anchor on top of the deck with the windlass, but then you don't have a clean deck. A person could actually step off of the front of this boat without having some sort of a tripping hazard. But it costs obviously more to be able to do that, and then the stainless anchor is a nice touch. Finally, this is a, um, it's not retractable really, it, it's the bow light, but if you press on it, it flips and goes away flat. Okay, this is showing the aft seat deployed in the down position. Um, so you can see, basically, if you're anchored out, you want to look at a sunset or you want to watch what's going on off of the back deck, you can basically chill and lay here. It's very easy to operate. You're just grabbing the seat by that handle. And when you redeploy it, the, you have a back-to-back -back there. So the forward part of the seat, you're sitting normally. The back part, you're still laying out storage all over the place. Now note some other things though. Note how this is guttered so the storage is dry. Some builders do not gutter their storage and they really should. Uh, secondly, these hinges are called compound hinges and they're a little tricky to use the first time you do but what it allows you to do is not have a, re a fully removable cushion that you have to put somewhere but you can also hinge the cushion because otherwise the backrest would keep it from opening all the way. Removable igloo cooler is always a handy thing. You take the cooler home, you pack it, you set it on the boat, you're done. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Best head compartments in the business. This is huge, very accommodating. One of the things that I like about head compartments is that they're also changing rooms. What happens on the Potomac is you might go swimming for a couple of hours and then go to the crab house to eat and, and some of the people are going to want to change. The dash is about as modern as dashes get. This is using Volvo Pena's electronic vessel control. You can tell by this throttle. Um, there's various settings over here for things like automatic power trim adjustments, um, speed control, the shifting is done by wire instead of by cable, so you don't have a cable to wear out, and the shifting is butter smooth. This is the remote for the stereo. The main unit is usually located in the head compartment. This is a digital trim indicator. I like that even more than the automatic trim. I like to know if I have smooth water, I can set that trim at, say, 5 degrees on the gauge, and I know I'm going as fast as I can at that RPM. This is something we normally teach during our orientation. Then we have a glass dash, um, reads off of the engine. One side is generally going to be GPS chart plotter uh, with depth, and then the other side will be reading your engine information. 
Okay, I really like to brag about Chaparral's bows. And I know that sounds really boring, but here's some things. Number one, um, tidal water boats. Hoffmasters Marina is located on the Potomac River. That's tidal water, and that means that you can have at any given moment a, a good solid white capping action that you have to drive through. And the deeper the bow, the better in that case. You have a lot of competitors in boats, even this size, where this backrest cushion is only about eight inches deep. And that's not really deep enough to be secure. If, if you get on a chaparral, more like 12 to 15 inches here up at the bow and deeper than that here, you're very secure inside this bow, very safe. Notice the full length grab rails, and those grab rails are above deck, not tucked under. Now chaparral, has plenty of cup holders and speakers and so forth recessed in this area. It's not that we are skimping on size. As a matter of fact, Chaparral has some of the uh, deepest bow storage of any boats on the market. And you can tell if a boat is deep in the bow um, by the amount of storage and by the fact that you don't have cup holders in stupid places like uh, underneath a cushion taking up where storage should be. But a full-length bow rail allows everybody sitting in the bow to grab a rail in rough water. Also, if you're at the dock and you're trying to grab the boat, it's an easy way to get the boat under control. Aft cockpit table and aft cockpit layout. Oh, one other thing. There's always more than one cooler on a chaparral. Here, if you lift this cooler up, there's a tread underneath so that you can step up onto the bow to get off of the boat if you want to, but then if you lift that lid, there's a built-in cooler. And unlike other brands, Chaparral's coolers drain overboard, not into the bow bilge compartment. Okay, what I'm trying to explain here is the Chaparral extended running surface. If you notice, the sides of this hull, this is particularly a 287, but the sides of the hull come back a little further than the transom where the engine is mounted. What that does is it helps the boat come over onto plane, helps the boat corner, and makes the boat handle a little bigger than its size would indicate. There's possibly a better shot of that. You've got about a foot deep um, extended running surface, and then you're seeing the underside of the uh, Infinity Power Step. Engine compartments are very clean on chaparrales. You can see a lot of use of stainless steel. Um, we're not trying to use a motorized engine hatch here. We're using a mechanical engine hatch, but it has a catch here to lock into place. Volvo Penta's stern drive installations are built for salt water. I, I know that sometimes um, on the forums, the stern drives get a wrap. A lot of that is old news. You, you, a lot of people want the stern drive because they get the back porch. Um, you get the big swim step area, which I'll show you in a minute. So having the Volvo Pennant installation is very friendly towards uh, having a durable boat. As you can tell from this antifreeze tank, the engine block is enclosed in antifreeze. It's called what's enclosed. It's called enclosed cooling. So your raw water which in our neck of the woods is fresh, but it can be salty, is basically coming in through this water pump and then going out through the exhaust manifolds and out the boat. The exhaust manifolds are made out of aluminum and have anodes on them, so you're not getting what used to happen a lot with stern drives where you have cast iron manifolds and risers and that manifold or riser joint goes bad, causing a very costly repair. A couple of other things to notice Notice how the boat is, uh, how, I mean, how the engine is color coded. So here's blue. This is stuff that you work with that's water related. So this is your attachment to flush the engine out if you want to. This is the quick drain system. So if you need to quickly freeze protect the boat, all you need to do is pull a pin and pop open that cap and the motor drains out. See, there's yellow, that, that's oil. And then red is, is protecting the basic engine parts. So this is your oil filter, which is a canister style filter. If you look down here, the bilge pump is easy to access. On many boats, it is buried under the engine and almost impossible to access if, for example, it gets a stuck float. And then this is your transducer for the depth finder system. 
Okay, what I'm going to explain to you now is another safety feature of the Chaparral's, which is called a self-bailing cockpit. You have two types of cockpits, self-bailing and self-draining. A self-draining cockpit drains into the bilge compartment, and then the water is expected to be carried overboard by the bilge pump. On a self-bailing cockpit, if you were to get a large amount of water into this boat, the water would drain through these scuppers and overboard. And here's how you know that that's true. Here's the fitting at the underside of that uh, scupper, and instead of it just draining into the bilge compartment, you see it's connected to a hose that's going to the side of the boat. You can actually see here where that hose is going overboard. So that's how you tell that a boat is self-bailing, and a self-bailing feature uh, on the Potomac River up where we are is not that big a deal down at the mouth of the Potomac River. Um, you can take a significant amount of water over the bow sometimes. Okay, finally, we're going to wrap up this tour with the swim platform. You can tell it's very large. You have this infinity power step, and then you have a pair of cup holders because this is now going to be a back porch. Just to show you, when it's deploying, what happens is that the step rolls over itself. You end up with two steps deploying down in the water. See, so now you basically have a seat. So now you have two steps. It's extremely easy to get on board. You just sit on that and spin. And it's really easy to get dogs onto the boat as well. Let's see, finally, we'll go all the way up to the top here. That sea deck, the material that you saw on the swim platform, is also on the, covering the entire floor. We just don't have it deployed because we want to keep it nice for the eventual owner. I hope you found this helpful. Feel free to call me at Hoffmasters Marina in Woodbridge, Virginia, 703-494-7161 if you have any questions or email me at joe at hoffmasters.com.